Haleluya. I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Na wasalimia katika jina kuu la Bwana Yesu Kristo. Shall we all stand as we read the message without to, wasting our time? To simame tunapoendelea kusifungua Biblia au tunapoendea ujumbe. Uh, can we look in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 4? Tuangalie kwenye kitabu cha Waebrania sura ya 11 ule mstari wa 4. Uh, brother can uh, read it for us in uh, Swahili. Na ndugu hapa tutasomea kwa Kiswahili. Tasoma kwa jina la Bwana Yesu. Kwa imani habili alimtolea Mungu dhabihu iliyo bora kuliko kaini. Kwa hiyo alishuhudiwa kuwa ana haki Mungu akazishuhudia sadaka zake na kwa hiyo ijapokuwa amekufa angali akinena. May the Lord add blessing to the reading. Amen. Bwana naongeze baraka kwenye kusoma kwa neno. Amina. Shall we pray? Tuombe. Our heavenly Father, Baba yetu wa mbinguni, we come before you once again in your presence this afternoon. Tunasogea mbele zako tena kwa mara nyingine mchana huu. Might God we thank you for thy way that has been going on pre being preached into our hearts. Mungu wangu nakushukuru kwa neno ambalo limeendelea kuhubiriwa mioyoni mwetu. We still ask you to be in our presence O oh God. Tungali tunakuomba uwe miongoni mwetu Bwana. Even as we bring your word O God. Hata tunapoleta neno lako. We ask you to come down and interpret your word O God. Tunaomba ushuke na ulifasiri neno lako. Because no man knows how to interpret your word. Kwa kuwa hapana mtu awezaye kufasiri neno lako. Only you Father who can be able to interpret it. Lakini wewe pekee uwezaye kulifasiri. Therefore we ask you Father to open our hearts. Kwa hiyo tunaomba ufungue macho yetu. So that we can receive your word O God. Ili tuweze kupokea neno lako Mungu. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Katika jina kula Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo tunaomba amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will try to be fast as we have heard. Nita jaribu kuwa haraka sana kama tulivyosikia. Because there's another service after this one. Kwa sababu hii ni ibada kuna ibada nyingine baada ya hii. Yeah, we are trying to look at the perfect faith. Tunajaribu kutazama juu ya imani kamilifu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the morning we had uh, the Holy Ghost. Asubuhi tulikuwa na So we are looking at the perfect faith. Kwa tunaangalia kuhusu imani kamilifu. As we look at faith, tunapoangalia imani, we pick up two worshipers back in the garden of Eden. Tunachukua waabudu wawili huko katika bustani ya Edeni. And this is Abel na hu, and Cain. Na huyu ni Habili na Kaini. And we find that the offering of Abel was accepted by na, God. Naona kwamba dhabihu ya Habili ilipokelewa na Mungu. And then the offering of Cain was not accepted na by God. Na ile ya Kaini haikupokelewa na Mungu. And if you look at these two worshipers, na kama utawatazama waabudu hao wawili, I don't know which church they belong to. I don't Sijui walikuwa ni washirika wa kanisa gani. They belong to. Sijui walikuwa ni washirika wa kanisa gani. Because many times we rely Uh, rest on our churches. So I don't want to mention names. Kwa hiyo sitaki kutaja majina. Uh, but which church was this? Lakini hili lilikuwa kanisa gani? And they belonged to which church? Now what you think of? Nawe ungewazia walikuwa washiriki wa kanisa gani? So what church would you think these people belonged to? Kwa hiyo ungewazia walikuwa ni washiriki wa kanisa gani? So I would like to draw your attention. Kwa hiyo ningevutia usikivu wenu. Unto the prophet. Kwa nabii He said alisema so when we walk on faith tutakapotembea kwa imani we must go back to genesis lazima turudi kwenye mwanzo so in the genesis kwa hiyo kule mwanzo we find the two worshipers nakuta waabudu wawili and now we have to talk on these two men na sisi natupasa kuwazungumzia abel and cain habili na kaini in the message the anointed one katika ule ujumbe wa watu mafuta wakati wa mwisho Watu mfuto wakati wa mwisho on paragraph uh, 65 ile aya ya 65 we find these trees tunaona miti hii mi, mi, the, the true vine and the false vine huu mzabibu wa uongo na mziba mzabibu wa kweli how they grew up together jinsi ilivyokuwa pamoja brought them in individuals individuals zi ikaleta kila kimoja kibinafsi and showed that kind and abel na ikaonyesha huyu kaini na abili two vines that met at an altar wa, ile mizabibu ile ukutana mbele ya madhabahu both of them were religious wote walikuwa wa kidini 
Both of them were anointed. Wote walikuwa wamepakwa mafuta. Both of them desiring life and worshiping the same God. Wote Both of them wote walitamani uzima na walimwabudu Mungu. And one was rejected. Na mmoja wao alikataliwa. The other one was received. Mwingine akakubaliwa. Because of revelation. Kwa sababu ya ufunuo, Abel saw it wasn't fruits. Abili aliona kwamba haikuwa matunda. Oh, Apo that brought them out of the garden of Eden. Au tofaa ambalo lililiwa pale katika bustani ya Edeni. It was the blood. Ilikuwa ni swala la damu. And he offered the blood. Naye akatoa damu. And God received it. Na Mungu akaikubali. And the only way na ni njia pekee that the one that was received could done anything ambaye yule ambaye angepokelewa angefanya chochote different from the brother uh, tofauti na huyu ndugu because it was revealed to him kwa sababu ili kwa imefunuliwa kwake for the bible said kwa sababu biblia ilisema by faith kwa imani in hebrews chapter 11 katika hebrewia sura ya 11 offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice lakini habili alimtolea mungu dhabihu bora zaidi than that of kain kuliko ile ya kaini which god testified that he was righteous ambapo mungu inaendelea na kusema kwamba ali kuwa mwenye haki. So it's not enough to say we worship the same God. Kwa hiyo si jambo linalotosha kusema kwamba tunaabudu Mungu yule yule. You can worship the same God. Unaweza mkao mnaabudu Mungu yule yule. But with what is important is your sacrifice being accepted. Lakini kinachojalisha ni kama dhabihu yako inakubalika. This is the issue. Hili ndio jambo lenyewe. Not we worship the same God. Sio juu ya kumwabudu Mungu yule yule. Yes, I'm trying you to bring to the to the attention. Napojaribu kuvuta usikivu. You know where there is the worship unajua pale kulipo na ibada there is a sacrifice kuna kutoa sadaka au kuna dhabihu now sasa you don't just sacrifice anyhow hautojitolei tu dhabihu vyovyote vile if you remember manoah and his wife kama utamkumbuka manoah na mkewe they didn't have a child hawakuwa na mtoto and when god visited them na wakati mungu alipowatembelea they desired to sacrifice waka sikia kumtolea Mungu but the angel of the lord lakini malaika wa Bwana told Manoa akamwambia Manoa to put his sacrifice kuweka dhabihu yake on a certain rock kwenye mwamba fulani not on that rock sio kwenye mwamba ule not on this rock au ule mwingine but put your kid lakini weke mwanao animal mnyama wako unliven bread mkate wako sio tu acha juu ya huu mwamba Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Equal also. Ndivyo hivyo hivyo pia. When Israel was in trouble. Wakati Israeli walipokuwa katika shida. You find that in Judges chapter 6. Unalipata leo katika waamuzi sura ya 6. They were in trouble. Walikuwa kwenye shida. They were being defeated by their enemies. Walikuwa wakishindwa na maadui zao. But one day God visited Gideon. Lakini siku moja Mungu alimtembelea Gideon. And sat under the oak tree. Na akaketi chini ya mwaloni. And God told Gideon. Na Mungu akamwambia Gideon, run, rise up, go in your might. Inuka, uende na katika ushujaa, ewe shujaa. And you shall conquer your enemies. Na utawashinda adui zako. You Gideon go save Israel. Eh Gideon nenda uiokoe Israeli. Then Gideon says. Ndipo Gideon akasema. I'm just a poor man. Mimi ni mtu maskini. How could it be? Nawezaje kufanya hivyo? I'm from a poor family. Natokea katika familia maskini. How do you say you are with us? Wawezaje kusema uko nasi? Where are your miracles? Miujiza yako iko wapi? Then Gideon said. Ndipo Gideon akasema. If truly God is with us. Kama ki ukweli Mungu pamoja nasi. The faith of the Lord is with us. The Kibali cha Mungu kiko nasi. Don't then don't go. Then don't go. Basi usiondoke. And when Gideon went to kill his kid, na alipokwenda kuua mwanae, animal, au nyama wake, and bet and uh, live and bread, na akaandaa mkate usiotoa chachu. When he came to that man under the tree, alipomrudia yule mtu pale chini ya mti, the man said put your sacrifice. Yule mtu akamwambia weka dhabihu yako on this rock. Juu ya huu mwamba. So we have to come to worship. Kwa hiyo yatupasa kuja kuabudu. There are so many people in the world kuna wa, kuna watu wengi ulimwenguni wanaweza kuabudu and worshiping you are giving sacrifice na kwa kuabudu unatoa dhabihu you don't put your sacrifice on any rock huweki dhabihu yako kwenye kila mwamba except where the angel directs you to Isipokuwa put isipokuwa pale malaika alipokuelekeza uweke dhabihu yako put your sacrifice on this rock weka dhabihu yako kwenye mwamba huu if you put it on other rock kama utaweka kwenye mwamba mwingine god is not going to accept it mungu hataikubali yes it is one god we cry to 
Ndiyo, ni Mungu yule ambaye tunamlilia. Now let me tell you friends. Hebu niwaambie marafiki. There are certain things that you can get from God. Kuna mambo waweza kuyapata kwa Mungu. Whether you are a wizard or you are righteous. Ama wewe ni mchawi au mwenye haki. The fact that God has fallen blessings on you. Ukweli kwamba Mungu amemimina baraka kwako. Does not mean that you are of God. Haimaanishi kwamba wewe ni wa Mungu. Because the rain falls on just and unjust. Kwa sababu mvua unyeshea wenye haki na wasio haki. The fact that you can cast demons Jambo kwamba unaweza ukatoa mapepo Walk on water au tembe juu ya maji does not entail that you are of god Hai, no haimaanishi wewe ni wa mungu la those who are ordained of internal life wale waliokusudiwa uzima wa milele god must visit them mungu lazima watembelee and god must review to them that lazima mungu awafunulie kwamba for me to receive your sacrifice ili nipokee dhabihu yako put it on this rock iweke juu ya mwamba huu haleluya haleluya and that when the angel did the miracles na wakati yule malaika alifanya jambo la kimiujiza the sacrifice was bent ile dhabihu iliteketezwa the smoke went straight moshi ukapanda juu and the angel went into that smoke of the sacrifice na, of manoah na malaika akaingia kwenye ule moshi wa dhabihu ya manoah meaning that worship of manoah was accepted kimaanisha ibada ya manoah ilikubalika Equally Gideon that's what happened. Vivyo hivyo ndivyo ilitokea kwa Gideon. And any worshipper na mwabudu yeyote you don't sacrifice. Kama utatoa dhabihu you are not even a worshipper. Hata hao wewe sio mwabudu. From where back kwa u, kuanzia huko nyuma God demanded sacrifice. Mungu ameitaji dhabihu. So we see these two gentlemen desiring life. Kwa hiyo tunaona hao jamaa wawili wote walitamani uzima. Death is certain. Kwa sababu Mauti ni shetani. Don't want to die. Hawataki kufa. They were desiring life. Walitaka uzima. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you and me are desiring right now. Ndio hicho mimi na wewe tunakitamani sasa. We want life. Tunahitaji uzima. No one wants to die like Hakuna that. Hakuna anayetaka kufa sasa. So I believe that. Kwa hiyo naamini kwamba. That's the purpose we are here today. Sababu kwamba tuko hapa leo. We are not coming here to be pastors no. Hatuji hapa ili tufanyike wachungaji. We are not coming here to be known to say we make names no. Hatuji hapa kutengeza majina yetu makubwa. We are coming here because we are desiring life. Tuna kuja hapa kwa sababu tunatamani uzima. Life is higher than our riches. Kwa sababu uzima ni mkuu kuliko utajiri wetu. So we are not here to make names. Kwa hiyo hatuko hapa kutengeneza majina. No 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 no. Hapana. No. Each one is here for desiring life. Kila mmoja yuko hapa kwa sababu anatamani uzima wake. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I have to think in that way. Ndio, inanipasa niwazie namna hiyo. To, to thank God. Inapasa nimshukuru Mungu. You have to thank God. Nanyi mumshukuru Mungu. Because if it wasn't for his grace. Kwa sababu kama haikuwa neema yake, I was going to die. Ningekufa. You are going to die. Utakufa. If it wasn't for his grace. Kama si kwa neema yake. I would have been in hospital right away. Labda ningekuwa hospitali sasa hivi. But now that he has given me the strength. Lakini kwa sababu amenipa nguvu. God has prospered pass me with a good health Mungu amenifanikisha kwa afya njema for the purpose that I worship kwa him kwa sababu ili ni mwabudu for the purpose that you should worship kwa sababu ili umwabudu amen 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 Amen. so we have come here to worship him kwa hiyo tumekuja ili tumwabudu god himself Mungu mwenyewe giving a sacrifice akitoa dhabihu he is giving an example akitoa mfano me i have sacrificed my own body mimi nimetoa mwili wangu mwenyewe you also must sacrifice your body na wewe pia unapaswa kutoa mwili wako even if you are tired hata kama umechoka god wants you to sacrifice your body mungu anataka utoe mwili wako after all it's not your body hata hivyo si wako it is his body ni mwili wake It is not your voice. Sio sauti yako. It is his voice. Ni sauti yake. It's not your time. Sio muda wako. It's God's time. Ni muda wa Mungu. So redeem time. Kwa hiyo ukomboe wakati. So the days are evil. Kwa sababu siku ni za uovu. Amen amen amen. Amen. Therefore, kwa hiyo stop giving excuses. Acha kutoa udhuru because you came with nothing here on earth kwa sababu ulikuja bila kitu hapa duniani so give god your time kwa hiyo mpe mungu muda give god your money mpe mungu fedha zako give god your houses mpe mungu nyumba yako give god your body mpe mungu mwili wako worship the lord you worshipers eh mwenye waabudu mwabuduni mungu amen 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 when it's time to go and do your your business Inapofika muda wa kwenda kufanya shughuli zako you don't give you excuses hautoi udhuru when you go to the market unapokwenda kanisani you don't give ah, excuses sokoni 
Hautoi udhuru. When you go to school, unapoenda shule, you don't go excuses. Hautoi udhuru. You go to your farm, unaenda shambani. You don't give excuses. Hautoi udhuru. Do you know why you are paid those people who worked? Those people who work. Kwa nini unajua ni kwa nini wale watu wanaofanya kazi wanalipwa? It is because you sacrifice. Ni kwa sababu unatoa dhabihu. That's why they pay you. Ndio maana wanakulipa. But when it's time to worship, lakini napofikia wakati wa kuabudu, you don't want to sacrifice. Hautaki kutoa dhabihu. When there are programs here at the church to come and worship, mnapoambiwa mje hapa kanisani kuja na kuabudu, you don't come here. Hamji. When you ask, mnapoambiwa you, you bring excuses. Mnatoa udhuru. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must give sacrifice. Lazima utoe dhabihu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this kind kwa hiyo wakati huu went in his farm. Ah huyu Kaini akaenda shambani kwake and got of his labor. Na akafanya kazi yake. He collected the cabbages. Akakusanya cabbage. The big onions. Na vitunguu vikubwa. Apples. Na matofaa. Oranges. Machungwa. All sort of flowers. Vi, kila kitu. I believe Cain made a good flower bouquet. Na amini kwamba Kaini alitengeneza ile buffet nzuri ya maua. And he went to the God's chosen place. Na akaenda kwenye mahali pale kuchaguliwa na Mungu. And they all kneeled. Na wote walijua expecting fire to come and burn the sacrifice. Na walitarajia moto ushuke na uteketeze dhabihu. Now where Cain had put his sacrifice? Sasa pale alipoweka Kaini dhabihu yake was different from where Abel had put his sacrifice. Ilikuwa ni tofauti na pale dhabihu alipoweka dhabihu. Amini Abeli alipoweka dhabihu. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen amen amen. Amen amen. He did it with his own wisdom. Alifanya kwa kutumia hekima yake mwenyewe. He did it by his own thoughts. Alifanya kwa mawazo yake. And that's what is happening today. Na ndio linalotokea leo. They do it by their own wisdom. Wanafanya kwa hekima yao. By their own schooling. Kwa shule zao. By their own education. Kwa elimu zao. Hallelujah. Amen. Abel habili by the revelation. Kwa ufunuo It was revealed to him. Ilifunuliwa kwake. And then Abel went in his sheepfold. Na ndipo Abeli akaingia kwenye kuni la kondoo wake. And he picked the best sheep. Na akachukua kondoo mnono na bora. Because sacrifice kwa sababu dhabihu something that should pain you. Ni kitu fulani ambacho inapaswa kikuumize. Because when you are giving something kwa sababu unapotoa kitu fulani don't choose the worst that you have you don't want it. Usichague kile ambacho huna uhitaji nacho and then you give it to your friend ndio unampa rafiki yako that's not a sacrifice hiyo sio dhabihu something should pain you kitu hicho kinapaswa kikuumize something which is nice kitu fulani ambacho ni kizuri it should be the best kinapaswa kae ni bora hallelujah hallelujah then you give it out ndio unakitoa are we together church je tuko pamoja kanisa brother brenham we say ndugu brenham alisema In fact I had a lot of problems. Kama ningekuwa na matatizo mengi. I had debts. Ningekuwa na madeni. My father was sick. Na baba yangu alikuwa ni mgonjwa. All of these things. Mambo haya yote. But one thing I did first. Lakini jambo ambalo nilifanya kabla. I gave tithe. Au nilitangulia kulifanya kwanza nilitoa dhabihu. Something that will pain you. Fungu la kumi. Jambo litakalokuumiza. I should have used the money on my own. Ningeweza kuzitumia pesa kwa ajili yangu. But I have to give God first. Lakini niliposa nimpe Mungu kwanza. Because that's where blessings come from. Kwa sababu hapo ndipo baraka zinapotokea. Now if it were in your position. Sasa kama ingekuwa ni wewe. Your son is do, your daughter or son is sick. Mwanao anaumwa binti yako au mwanao kiume. Your mother is sick. Au mama yako anaumwa. And then you have this money. Na kisha umepata hizi fedha. Which you have just received. Ambao tu umezipokea. You are not going to recognize God first. Hautamtanguliza Mungu kwanza. You would like first to sort out your problems. Ungetaka kwanza kushughulikia tatizo lako. Then you leave God behind. Na umwache Mungu nyuma. But brother Brenham we say. Lakini ndugu Brenham anasema. Despite those problems. Pamoja na hayo yote matatizo. First of all he had to give God the tithe. Jambo la kwanza alimpa Mungu zaka. What about you brother? Vipi kuhusu wewe ndugu? What about you sister? Vipi kuhusu wewe dada? Do you give God First, je, unampa Mungu kwanza? Do you give him the tithe? Unampa dhabihu zaka? Do you give him the offering? Unampa sadaka? Oh God is your last to after you solve your problems. Ama Mungu ni wa mwisho baada ya kushughulikia matatizo yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. You know when if you have been following, 
Unajua kama mmekuwa mkifuatilia kuanzia mwanzo. The tithe offering thing has been there. Jambo la fungu la kumi limekuwa likiendelea. Meaning God wants something to happen. Ikimaanisha Mungu anataka kitu fulani kitokee. It's, it's either people they don't obey that. Ni ama watu hawaheshimu au hawatii hilo kitu hicho. We don't Hatutoe ama toe fungu la kumi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now, lakini sasa, Malaki is telling us that. Malaki anatuambia, if you are not giving a tithe, kama hautoi fungu la kumi, you are not a thief. Wewe sio mwizi. You are a robber. Wewe ni mnyang'anya au jambazi. There is a difference. Kuna there's a difference. Kuna tofauti between a thief ka, ka, and a robber. Kati ya mwizi na mnyang'anyi. Au kibaka. I want to emphasize on this. Nataka kuutilia mkazo juu ya hili. Eh hey, mkabaji. So when these two people are being caught. Kwa hiyo hao watu walipokamatwa. When these people when these people are caught walipokamatwa wanapokamatwa and taken to the courts of law na wanapelekwa kwenye mahakama ya sheria the judgment that will be given to a thief ah hukumu itakayotolewa kwa mwizi he will be told you are going to serve for six months in prison atamwambia utatumikia miezi sita gerezani or one year in prison ama mwana, mwaka mmoja gerezani but a robber lakini mnyang'anya You know why God has used the robber? Unajua Mungu ana A robber is somebody who goes in the house with a gun or, or with anything. Mnyang'anyi ni yule mtu ambaye anaingia kwenye nyumba na bunduki au na silaha yoyote. To go and kill and destroy. Kwenda kuua na kuangamiza. So even his sentence. Kwa hiyo even his sentence. Kwa hiyo hata hukumu yake it's life imprisonment. Ni kufungwa maisha. That's the word he has used to you who ni, don't give a tithe. Hilo ndilo neno lilotumika kwa yule ambaye halipi fungu la kumi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we want blessings. Ndio tunahitaji baraka. But God cannot bless us. Lakini Mungu hawezi kutubariki. When we are going in his house, wakati tunaingia kwenye nyumba yake gun, na bunduki and destroying. Na tunaua no matter how however we cry. Haijali tunalia kiasi gani. Whether you cry you do what? Hata ulio ufanye nini? God will never listen to you. Mungu hatakusikiliza. Because you are breaking his house. Kwa sababu umevunja nyumba yake. You are a robber. Wewe ni jambazi. You are not a thief. Wewe sio tu mwizi ni jambazi. Branham is saying. Na ndugu Branham anasema. If you have got 200 members in the church. Kama unawashirika 200 kanisani. Only five comes in the presence to support the work of God. Na watano ndio wanakuja na kulipa kusupport kazi ya Mungu. And pay their tithe. Na wanalipa fungu la kumi. And pay their offering. Na wanalipa dhabi zaka zao ama sadaka zao. Those five. Hao watano are the members of the church. Ndio washirika wa kanisa. Not the 100 and uh, or oh, 200. So 195. No. Hapana. So if you don't pay. Kwa hiyo kama haulipi. Despite you belong at, at Banana Tabernacle. Haijalishi kwamba wewe uko kanisa la Banana. You are not a member of Banana Tabernacle. Wewe sio mshirika wa kanisa la Banana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes you can be coming in. Sawa unaweza ukao unakuja. But you don't support the work of God. Lakini Hausaidi kazi ya Mungu haungi mkono. So the only person they know there are those who come in presence. Kwa hiyo watu pekee wanaotambulika ni wale wanaokuja and support the work of God. Wanaokuja upeni mwake na wanasaidia kazi ya Mungu. And give the tithe. Na wanatoa fungu la kumi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's very hard on this this subject. Yes. Lazima niwe mkali juu ya jambo hili. It's very hard on this subject. Ni ngumu sana kwenye hichi kitu. You get your salary. Kusumu. Unapata mshahara wako. But you don't come and pay your tithe to the, to, to the to the Lord. Lakini hauji kulipa fungu la kumi kwa Bwana. You face with your problems. Unatanguliza matatizo yako. But who gave you that money? Lakini nani alikupa hizo pesa? It's God. Ni Mungu. That money is not yours. Hizo pesa sio zako. God has just given you to keep that money. Mungu amekupa kwa uzitunze so in his in, in the return he wants just a 10% kwamba wakati unamrudishia nataka umrudishie tu asilimia kumi. but you don't do that lakini hamfanyi hivyo that's why you find problems in your working places ndio maana mnapata kazi matatizo kazini kwenu because you don't honor god kwa sababu hamheshimu mungu some would say yeah, me i don't work wengine wangasema ah mimi sifanyi kazi ama sijaajiriwa some, some of you are farmers 
Baadhi yenu ni wakulima. When you cultivate, unapolima, you get your 150 bags of maize. Unapata magunia ya mahindi 150. They are bags for the Lord. Kuna mabe, magunia ya Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it's becoming hard. Najua linaendelea kuwa gumu. It's becoming hard. Linakuwa gumu. So after your cultivation, kwa hiyo baada ya kilimo chako, your 150 bags. Ma, ma gunia 150. There are 15 bags for the Lord. Kuna 15 kwa bwana kwa ajili ya bwana. Yalete. Amen 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 amen. Amen. Yes. Ndio. That's why sometimes today you have got bump harvest. This year you have bump harvest. Uh, ndio maana mna mavuno pungufu. Next year you will not even harvest anything. Mwakaani labda hamtavuna chochote. Amen. Because you didn't honor. Kwa sababu hukuheshimu. Hallelujah. Amen. Think twice my sister my brother. Waza mara mbili dada yangu na ndugu yangu. Not only farmers, some of you you, you keep uh, animals. Sio tu wa kulima hata baadhi yenu ni wafugaji. In whatever you do, chochote ufanyacho. There is something for the Lord. Kuna kitu fulani cha Bwana. Some of you have got businesses. Baadhi yenu mna biashara. I'll just give an example. Nitawapa mfano. You know if you're a child of God, unajua kama wewe ni mwana wa Mungu. You have got your 10,000. Unayo ya shilingi 10,000. And then you want to start business. Na unataka kuanza biashara. Better you come to your pastor. Ni heri uje kwa mchungaji wako. Hallelujah. Amen. Out of that 10,000. Katika hiyo 10,000. Remove 1,000. Toa 1,000. Which is the tithe. Ambayo ni fungu la 10. Then this 9,000. Alafu hii 1,000. Tell your pastor pray for me I want to start business. Mwambie mchungaji niombee nataka kuanza biashara. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. Now when you go and do your business. Kwa hiyo unapokwenda kufanya biashara. Don't think you have stopped giving tithe. Don't think Don't think you have stopped giving tithe. Uh, ushiende kufanya biashara ukawazia kwamba sasa nimemaliza kulipa fungu la 10. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you would say yes I've give I gave tithe. Unaweza kusema ndio nimelipa fungu la kumi. When you get your 9000, unapopata ile shilingi 5000, you invest it there. Unaiweka ukeza huko kwenye biashara. And then you realize 15000. Na unapata 1015. This is now mathematics. Ambayo ni hesabu sasa. You supposed to give tithe. Unapaswa kutoa fungu la kumi. Now, on which figure are you supposed to give tithe? Sasa ni kiasi gani unakitolea fungu la kumi? It's not on the 15000. Sio ile 10000. It's time is not with me I'll just do a bit. It's not on that 15000. Sio ile 10000. That 15000 that you have got ile 10000 ulionayo from the 9000 kutoka kwenye 9000. So in 15000 kwa hiyo kwenye 10000 remove the 9000. Toa ile 9000. Because on 9000 kwa sababu kwenye ile 9000 you already gave a tithe. Tayari ushalipia fungu la 10. Are we together church? Tuko pamoja. Then you remain with 6000 shillings. Ndio unabakiwa na 6000. From the 6000 shillings. Kutoka kwa shilingi 6000. That's when you get your tithe and give. Ndio unatoa fungu lako la 10 na unalipa. Is it confusing? Je, inachanganya? No, no, no. Hallelujah. So that 600 shillings. Hizo shilingi 6000. Hizo shilingi 600. You add it now to the 9000. That six after you remove the tithe. Baada ya kutoa fungu la 10, you you add the balance with the 9000. Ah, na maanisha anaamini na maanisha hivi. Baada ya kutoa ile sehemu ya 10 kwenye 6000, kilichobaki pale unaongezea kwenye ile 9000. So you put it still in the business. Kwa hiyo unarudisha tena kwenye biashara yako. So what is the profit? Kwa hiyo unapopata na faida, remove that nine toa ile 9000 remove that uh, balance which from the 6 utoe na ile uh, iliyobakia kutoka kwenye ile 6000 baada ya kutoa whichever remains on top kitakachobakia cha ziada you need to tithe. unatoa tena fungu la kumi that's the way the business people are supposed to do it hivyo ndivyo watu wafanya biashara wanapaswa kufanya lakini hawamfanyi hivyo no wonder your businesses are going down ndio maana biashara zenu zinashuka hallelujah hallelujah
I'll move out of there because there's no time. Ita na ilo, so what I can explain later. Amen. Amen. So if you don't give, Kwa yu kama hautoi, you are a robber. Wewe ni mnyanganyi. So now Abel Kwa hiyo Habili went and looked for the first ship, the first ship. Alienda akatafuta kondoo mnene. Very wonderful. Mzuri. Brought that life on the altar. Akaleta hayo maisha hayo kondoo kwenye madhabahu. And he took a sharp stone. Na akachukua jiwe lililonolewa. And he made sure that he was killing it on the strong rock. Na akahakikisha kwamba anamuua juu ya mwamba ulio imara where gideon had sacrificed ambapo gideoni alitoa dhabihu yake where manoah had sacrificed ambapo manoah alitoa dhabihu yake and that and that is the rock where jesus was killed na ha huo mwamba ndio pale yesu alipouawa jesus was was not killed outside the rock yesu hakuuawa pembeni ya mwamba au nje ya mwamba there was a rock there kulikuwa na mwamba pale alipouawa hallelujah hallelujah so abel kwa hiyo habili Killed the ram on the on the rock. Alimuwa mwanakondo juu ya mwamba. And Abel died on the same rock with his ram. Na Habili alifia kwenye mwamba ule ule pamoja na kondo wake. Every believer that comes to Christ. Na kila mwamini amjai Kristo. Must come to the same cross of the self denial. Lazima aje na msalaba ule ule wa kujikana mwenyewe. And die there with the lamp. Na afya hapo na mwanakondo. With his lamp. Mwanakondo wake. So die out of your own thoughts. Kwa hiyo jifie kutoka kwenye mawazo yako. Die out of your own thinking. Jifie kutoka kwenye fikra zako. Just take what the Holy Spirit says in your heart. Chukua kile Roho Mtakatifu anachosema moyoni mwako. Then live for Christ. Na uishi kwa ajili ya Kristo. The true worship brothers Mwa, uh, mwabuduo wa kweli ndugu. You don't put your sacrifice anyhow no. Hauweki Sadaka yako au dhabihu yako vyovyote vile. There must be a rock. Lazima kuwe na mwamba. That's why you must put your sacrifice. Ambapo unapaswa kuweka dhabihu yako. That's when the angel of the Lord came. Hapo ndipo malaika wa Bwana alikuja with his staff na fimbo yake. Then he will hold the end. Na ndipo atashikilia ule mwisho. You will hold Genesis. Utashikilia ule mwanzo and the end. Na Atashikilia ule mwanzo na mwisho. The other end will be revelation. U, ule mwisho mwingine utakuwa ni ufunuo. So revelation must burn your sacrifice. Kwa hiyo ufunuo lazima uteketeze dhabihu yako. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Napata najaribu kusema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the prophet is saying, Sasa nabii alisema, Kain and Abel, Kain na Habili, the twin of the vines, wale wazao wawili wa mzabibu, met at the altar walikutana kwenye madhabahu both religious wote wa kidini both anointed wote wametiwa mafuta but one was received lakini mmoja wao alipokelewa and one was not received na mwingine hakupokelewa amen do you know that both of them were anointed je unajua wote walikuwa wametiwa mafuta in fact the pastor of Cain and Abel was Jehovah himself Kiukweli mchungaji wa ada, wa abili na Kaini alikuwa ni Yehova mwenyewe. Because Cain can hear from the voice of God. Kwa sababu Kaini pia anaweza kusikia kutoka kwa sauti ya Yehova. And Abel can hear from the voice of God. Naye abili anaweza kusikia sauti ya Yehova. So anointed. Wote wametiwa mafuta. So religious. Wa kidini. Both desiring life wote wakitamani uzima and worshiping the same god na walimwabudu Mungu yule ule the prophet says nabii anasema and the bible says na biblia inasema one was rejected mmoja wao alikataliwa and the other one was received na mwingine alikubaliwa so you are not going to be received because you think you are received kwa hiyo haukubaliwi kwa kuwazia tu kwamba umekubaliwa there are certain parameters that you gonna meet kuna mambo kadhaa lazima uyatimize there are certain things you need to do for you Ku, to receive of god kuna vitu unahitaji kuvifanya ili umpokee Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. So the other one it was revealed to him. Kwa hiyo mmoja wao alilifanya kwa ufunuo. The other one it wasn't revealed to them. Mwingine hakuwa na ufunuo. So you can be here. Kwa hiyo waweza kuwa the hapa. Same pastor. Mchungaji ni yule yule. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same message. Ujumbe ule ule. But one will be blessed. Lakini mmoja anabarikiwa. The other one will not be blessed. Mwingine habarikiwi. Hallelujah. May I say this? Hebu niseme hili. Are you sure Cain didn't have faith? Je, una uhakika kwamba Kaini hakuwa na imani? He had faith. Alikuwa na imani. 
What made Cain to go and get those cabbages? Ni kitu gani kilimfanya Cain akachukua hizo cabbage? And what made Cain to go and kneel and worship? Na ni nini kilimfanya Cain apige magoti na aabudu? It was faith. Ni imani. Hallelujah. Amen. But there is a perfect faith. Lakini ipo imani kamilifu. Because everyone who comes here on earth has a degree of faith. Kwa sababu kila mmoja ajaye ulimwenguni ana kiasi fulani cha imani. When you are sick Unapoumwa and you go to a witch doctor na unamwendea mganga wa kienyeji you have that faith unayo hiyo imani for you to go there kwa ya kukupeleka kule when you are sick unapoumwa you go to the hospital unaenda hospitali you have the faith unayo imani that's why you are going there ndio maana unaenda huko but there is a faith lakini ipo imani that can bring healing to people ambayo inaweza kuleta uponyaji kwa watu but there is a faith lakini kuna imani that you need unayohitaji for you to go in heaven ili kwenda mbinguni whoever come to jesus yeyote amjia yesu and jesus say na yesu alisema your faith has healed you imani yako imekuponya and that man who was born, born lame na yule aliyezaliwa akiwa mlemavu au kiwete who was baking who was baking baking ambaye alikuwa akiomba a- akioka by faith he would sit by the way which was going to the temple yule ambaye alikuwa akiomba kwa imani alikaa kwenye njia kuelekea kwenye hekalu because by faith he believed kwa sababu kwa imani aliamini say if i sit here akasema kama nikiketi hapa able to receive some money nitaweza kupokea fedha and one day there was past a man na siku moja alipita mtu when he turned ambaye aligeuka the eyes of that faith ambapo aligeuza macho ya ile imani yake because that man peter was faith kwa sababu yule mtu peter petro alikuwa imani so brother brenham is saying kwa hiyo ndugu brenham anasema peter was faith Ima, petro alikuwa imani john was love yohana alikuwa upendo jacob was, was hope yakobo alikuwa tumaini and this true faith na hii imani ya kweli was passing his way ilipita kwenye mahali alipokuwa and the man had faith na yule mtu alikuwa na imani but there came another faith na hapa ikaja imani nyingine walking, ikitembea and peter said na P- petro akasema silver and gold dhahabu na fedha i have not sina but what i got lakini kila nilichonacho i'm gonna give you nitakupa so in other ways kwa maneno mengine peter is saying petro alisema i'm going to give you my faith nitakupa imani yangu Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the face of Peter, kwa hiyo uso wa Peter had to change the body of the lame man. Ulipaswa kubadili ama imani ya Petro ulibadilisha ulibadilisha ule kiwete. The hindrance was not the spirit. Kizuizi haikuwa roho. The hindrance was not a song. Kizuizi haikuwa wimbo. The challenge he had was the body. Uh, kizu, eh, changamoto yake ilikuwa ni mwili and my brother there oh. will be a body change I'm sorry anasema kizuizi hakikuwa kwenye roho wala hakikuwa kwenye nafsi bali ilikuwa ni mwili yes. now you can continue so there will be a body change kwa hiyo kutakuwa na badiliko la mwili now that that body change sasa hilo badiliko la mwili there's need for somebody with the face to pass by your way Ninahitaji mtu fulani mwenye imani apite njiani mwako. To change your body. Abadilishe mwili wako. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus asked the disciples. Kwa hiyo Yesu aliwauliza mitume. What do people say? Watu wanasema I am. Watu wanasema mimi ni nani? Because I'm so poor. Kwa sababu mimi ni maskini. I have no house. Sina nyumba. What do people say I am? Watu wanasema mimi ni nani? Then they reported to him na wakamjibu they say no some are saying you are prophet baadhi wanasema wewe ni nabii some they say no you are elijah wengine wanasema ah ni elia then he said what about you akasema na ninyi mnasemaje everyone was quiet kila mmoja alikaa kimya hallelujah hallelujah everyone was quiet kila mmoja alikaa kimya then peter ndipo petro mr faith bwana imani said akasema you are not a man wewe sio mtu you are the christ wewe ni Kristo. You are not a man. Wewe sio mtu. You are the Holy Ghost. Wewe ni Roho Mtakatifu. You are not a man. Wewe sio mtu. You are the end of the Lord. Wewe ni malaika wa Bwana. You are not a man. Wewe sio mtu. You are the pillar of fire. Wewe ni nguzo ya moto. You are not a man. Wewe sio mtu. You are the angel of covenant. Ni yule malaika wa agano. That's what Peter said. Ndicho Petro alisema. Because Christ 
Kwa sababu Kristo is the angel of the Lord. Ni malaika wa Bwana. Christ is the Holy Ghost. Kristo ni roho mtakatifu. Christ is the pillar of fire. Kristo ni nguzo ya moto. Christ is God. Kristo ni Mungu. So what Peter said? Kwa hiyo alichosema Petro, you are God. Wewe ni Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for us to attain a certain change, kwa hiyo ili tufikie badiliko fulani, we must God must come down. Lazima Mungu ashuke. And we must come in his presence. Na lazima tuingie wepo ni mwake. For this body to be changed. Ili mwili huu badilike. When you look in First Corinthians, utakapoangalia kwenye wa Korintho wa kwanza, uh, chapter 15, sura ya 15, verses 47 to 50. Amsari wa 47 hata wa 50. It says. Inasema. The first man is of the earth. Mtu wa kwanza ni wa asili ya dunia. Earthly. Ni wa dunia. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Na yule wa pili ni Bwana kutoka mbinguni. As this is the earthly, kama huu ulivyo wa dunia, such are they also that are earthly. Vivyo hivyo walivyo hao wa dunia. And as this is the heavenly na huu wa kimbinguni such are they also that are heavenly ndivyo hivyo walio hao wa mbinguni and as we have born the image of the earthly na kama tulivyo za uh, sura ya kidunia we shall also bear the image of the heavenly pia tutazaa sura ya mbinguni so i say this brethren na mimi nasema hivi ndugu the fresh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god mwili na nyama hawezi kurithi ufalme wa mungu neither does corruption inherit the in corruption wala uharibifu hawezi kurithi uharibifu so kutoka that they are all men kwa hiyo tunaona kwamba tuna watu wote there is a first man and the second man kuna mtu wa kwanza na mtu wa pili they are here on earth too wote wawili wako hapa duniani everything is too too kila kitu ni viwili viwili the first man is of earth Huyu wa kwanza ni wa duniani. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Na huyu wa pili ni Bwana kutoka mbinguni. He has just to leave the heaven and come. Elimpasa aache mbingu na kuja. We want him. Tunamhitaji. How can I go to heaven? Nawezaje kwenda mbinguni? Except by him. Isipokuwa kwa yeye. So he must come down. Kwa hiyo lazima ashuke. Then he must take me to heaven. Na anipeleke mbinguni. The Lord must come down. Bwana lazima ashuke. Now who is this first man? Sasa huyu mtu wa kwanza ni nani? We are talking about Adam. Tunamzungumzia Adam. Who is this second man? Huyu wa pili ni nani? We are talking about Jesus Christ. Tunamzungumzia Yesu Kristo. Jesus was 100% man. Yesu Kristo alikuwa 100% man. Adam was 100% man. Adam alikuwa 100% man. But this man is called the Lord from heaven. Lakini huyu mtu anaitwa Bwana kutoka mbinguni. The Lord of glory. Bwana wa utukufu. Came and hide himself alishuka, in this man here. Alishuka na akajificha ndani ya huyu mtu hapa. Because the Lord is the Holy Ghost. Kwa sababu Bwana ni Roho Mtakatifu. You can't see him. Huwezi kumuona. So you are two in one. Kwa hiyo wewe ni wawili ndani ya mmoja. I am also two in one. Nami ni wawili ndani ya mmoja. The first image in the likeness of the first man. Na wa kwanza anafanana na yule mtu wa, wa, wa kwanza. Just his body he gave you to live in. Ambao ni mwili wake alikupa uishi ndani yake. Only express that he is the one that is greater yet to come. Ikionyesha tu kwamba huyo ndiye mkuu ambaye atakuja. Now the same way kwa hiyo namna hiyo hiyo we also have to be born in the image of him. Unapaswa kuzaliwa katika kufanana naye. We shall bear the image of the heavenly which holds no evil. Tutachukua sura ya yule wa kimbinguni ambayo haina uovu. This one does not hold any evil. Huyu hana uovu wote. Does not hold any sicknesses. Hana maradhi. But this body that we have. Lakini huu mwili tuliyonao it is evil ni wo, ni wa uovu it contains sicknesses unaweza ukapata maradhi so when you receive the holy ghost kwa hiyo unapokea roho mtakatifu you are sealed until the journey is over unatiwa muhuri mpaka kikomo cha safari that is your token hiyo ni ishara yako that you hold unayoshikilia that shows that your fare has been paid ikionyesha na uli yako imelipwa you are a redeemed character wewe ni mtu aliyekombolewa satan has got no business Ibilisi hana shughuli 
But this body lakini huu mwili no matter how we cherish it no matter how we try to powder it tutengeneza tengeneza no matter how we try to change our skin no matter how they praise you haidhuru wanakusifia jinsi gani you are so beautiful kwamba wewe ni mrembo sana this image is of an animal hii taswira usura hii ni ya mnyama and it is corrupt na inaharibika it is stinks inanuka it has got worms ina minyoo and it cannot inherit the kingdom of god na haitarithi ufalme wa mungu hallelujah so you must be a body change kwa hiyo lazima uwe badiliko la mwili there must be a body change lazima kuwe na kubadilika kwa mwili but to go to which body lakini kuelekea mwili gani the heavenly ule wa kimbinguni go in the image of him Nenda katika taswira yake that come from the him, from heaven yule aliyetoka mbinguni haleluya haleluya 51 says amsina moja anasema behold i show you my mystery anga tazameni na watumia wa, uh, na waonyeshe ni siri yangu we shall not all sleep sisi sote hatusalala we shall all be changed bali tutabadilishwa mystery is a hidden secret fumbo ni siri iliyofichwa Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A hidden secret is something that you don't know. Siri iliyofichika ni kitu ambacho hukielewi au kijui. Something that I don't know. Kitu ambacho mimi sikijui. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We which are alive sisi tulio hai and remain to the coming of the Lord na tutakausalia hata kule kuja kwa Bwana. Shall not pervert that which are asleep. Hatutawazuia wale walio lala. We will have to be changed and caught up. Tutabadilishwa na kutwaliwa. Because this body kwa sababu mwili huu is too heavy bado ni mzito it cannot meet the lord hawezi kutana na bwana until it's changed paka umebadilishwa that's when you can be able to meet him ndipo unaweza kutana naye hallelujah hallelujah remember the angel and manoah mkumbuke yule malaika na manoah he said manoah asked what is your name alisema manoah aliuliza jina lako ni nani the angel said my name is secret akasema jina langu ni siri. Why do you ask my name? Kwa nini wauliza jina langu? Because my name is secret. Kwa sababu jina langu ni la siri. And Paul is saying, Paul is saying, Na Paulo anasema, but we shall all be changed. Lakini sote tutabadilishwa. At the last trumpet. Katika ile parapanda ya mwisho. Not the first trumpet. Sio ile ya kwanza. The first trumpet can never change you. Parapanda ya kwanza haiwezi kubadilisha. Genesis can never change you. Genesis. Ah, mwanzo hauwezi kubadilisha. But there is the last book. But la, lakini kuna kitabu cha mwisho. Revelation. Cha ufunuo. 22. 22. Who change you? Kitakubadilisha. So have faith in God. Kwa hiyo muamini Mungu. Believe with all your heart. Amini kwa moyo wako wote. And you shall see the glory of God. Na utaona utukufu wa Mungu. If you can't believe. Kama hutaweza kwa uwezi kuamini. All things are possible. Kama uwezi kuamini mambo yote yanawezekana. Do that believe. Kwa wale wanaoamini. Just have faith. Uwe na imani in God katika Mungu and God is going to bless you. Na Mungu atakubariki. Bless God, bless bless you. Mungu, eh, Mungu awabariki.